Alright, so today, um, what I want to go over is, you know, there's a lot of people out there and I see a lot of um, aspiring coaches. And uh, sometimes I don't think really as an industry or as people we understand what it entails to be a great coach. And, um, you know, I'm not by any means gonna sit here and uh, toot Matt's horn, or maybe I am. It might look that way. But I know from what I have with Matt in, in the aspect of not only a friendship, but a coach um, athlete relationship is something very rare, something very unique. And um, I think that due to Matt being an amazing, great coach, uh, you know, and, and um, whether you agree or disagree, uh, it's hard to argue his track record. So we'll leave that at that. But there's certain things that make what me and Matt do successful, you know, and I see a lot of people and posts and things and it's uh you know like one that i just comes to mind um somebody made a post about um you know basically if you were to give any old joe blow mechanic a ferrari and he changes the oil and rotates the tires i bet you're gonna start winning races because it's a ferrari basically entailing that because of me and who i am and my work ethic and the genetic um, components that are at play within within my physique, um, you know, Matt deserves little to no credit due to the fact that I'm just an anomaly. Um, now, personally, I don't believe that I am uh, that big of a genetic outlier. I think I do. I am blessed with great genetics. I think it's part of bodybuilding. I think that's early in bodybuilding separates. Uh, the people that are going to go a long ways in it and the people that aren't. And um, unfortunately, sometimes <clears throat> that's just the way it is in life, you know. Um, I don't care how much another trainer or another sprinter trains uh, or how hard he trains, uh, odds are he's not going to be Hussein Bolt. You know, um, there are genetic limitations among within us all. But that being said, <clears throat> is back to the whole Ferrari analogy um, you know first and foremost you have to be uh, educated enough to work on a car uh, the high performance vehicle like that just as Matt has to be educated enough to work with a <clears throat> individual with um, very demanding needs such as myself you know secondly you have to find somebody that's willing to trust you with their Ferrari you know what I'm saying? It's not like you're just gonna come up to uh, the very wealthy man, uh, you know, walk into his very nice car and be like, hey man, why don't you let me tune that up for you? He's probably gonna laugh at you and be like, wow, you know? Um, so, those right there are two components that I think people are overlooking uh, drastically. Number one, you have to be educated and certified to do such work. And number two, uh, you have to be trustworthy enough and reliable enough and honest enough to be, um, well, for lack of a term, to be gifted with the opportunity. Um, not that, you know, working with me is much of a gift. It's probably more of a pain in the ass. Um, but, uh, you know, things like that, I think, are often <coughs> overlooked. And then, also, when it comes to me and Matt, I think there's an aspect that uh, that people don't see and that people don't know, and and this is where it hits home for me, and this is where I know that I like, you know, when I wake up in the morning and when I go to bed at night and when I walk into the gym with Matt, like I know without a doubt I've got the best partner in crime I could have for the task at hand, and it goes way beyond making a diet, it goes way beyond laying out training. It goes into the realm of Matt 
his his role is is just uh, it's so many things. I mean, number one, he saves me from myself. I mean, you know, if it weren't for Matt, I'd be training three hours a day, doing two hours of cardio a day, and starving myself every day because I mean, I just want to win that bad. And uh, I truly think that he he saves me from myself in that aspect. And then also there's the mental side of things, you know, is, is he's just as much a, a shrink as he is a coach. Um, you know, whether it be I wake up in the morning, and, and the crazy thing about uh, our relationship is he knows from the first word I speak in the morning what kind of day and what kind of mood I'm in. You know what I'm saying? We talked about it last night. We laughed about it. But it's true, you know. I wake up in the morning, I look in the mirror, I'm not happy with the way I look. I'm not happy with the weight on the scale. I'm not happy with this and the other. It's like, hey, let's just take these fucking pictures and go to the cardio. You know, I wake up and I'm happy. He can tell because I'm chipper. I'm funny. I'm, I'm my normal self. Um, he can also tell when I'm, you know, uh, got got other things on my mind, whether it be, uh, you know, something that I read online that, that maybe got under my skin or something that, uh, you know, so and so said that they just rubbed me the wrong way. Or maybe I'm just in a bad mood because, you know, girlfriend issues or family issues or whatever. But there's so much more that goes into being a coach, and not just a physique coach, but any coach, than just X's and O's. And these intangible things are what truly makes for a coach-athlete uh, relationship that, that's really going to be successful. And, and I think when it comes to us, uh, that, that's what we have here. And, uh, you know, it's really easy from the outside looking in to not quite grasp everything that's at play and to underappreciate the many hats that Matt wears. You know, Matt's my best friend. Uh, Matt's also a mentor. Um, Matt is, like I said, a shrink. Matt is my training partner. Matt is my dietitian. Matt is, you know, uh, when you know and not not to um degrade matt or belittle him in any way because this isn't what i'm saying but matt handles things that nobody else would want to handle you know whether it be booking flights whether it be arranging my travel whether it be making sure when i get to where i go i have my food whether it be you know so many little things that other coaches would be too prideful to do matt's got me you know so um for you guys out there that are aspiring to uh, maybe go down the road such as Matt, and maybe you would, you know, look to Matt as an example, uh, because I know when Matt was coming up doing this, he looked at Neil Hill as an example. And Neil is now one of Matt's best friends. And uh, Neil is also uh, a good friend of mine, as well as Flex. And, and it's funny because when me and Matt started working together, I think the people we uh, desired to emulate the most were them too because you look at what they've accomplished and the way they've accomplished it as professionals and businessmen is second to none. 